Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to Divine Allegiance. I'm your host, Molana Baik. Today's topic, the Shahadat of Imam Musa Qadim alayhi salam, the legacy of desertion. When we look at the seventh Imam of the line of Imamat of Ahlul Bayt, his name is Musa and his title is Al Qadim. And his kunya is Abul Hassan. He was born on the 7th of Safar, and his shahadat is on the 25th of the month of Rajab. He lived during the Abbasi rulers, starting with Mansur Dawanaki, Muhammad Mahdi, Hadi Abbasi, and Harun al Rashid. This knowledge of the Imam and this information regarding the Imam does not constitute ma'rifat of the Imam. Knowing this does not make you come closer to the Imam. In fact, the professors who teach Islam in universities, non-Muslims who have nothing to do with the Imams, they have more knowledge of the history and the circumstances of the Imams than many Shias do. This doesn't constitute marifat of the Imam. If someone dies knowing all of this information regarding the Imam, they die the death of Jahiliyyah. When the Hadith says, Man mata walam ya'rif imam zamanihi mata mitatan Jahiliyyah, anyone who dies and does not know the Imam of the time, the word is ma'rifat, not ilm. Having ilm of the imams is not ma'rifat. That ilm has to be in the heart. That recognition has to be from the heart. Otherwise, having all this information doesn't count for anything. It doesn't help us to reach there. And hence, when we look at this non-recognition and people who do not have marif of the, the imam and we're talking about shias now we're talking about believers now we see that there is a legacy in the history of imam and the history of the imams of the imams being deserted by their shias being abandoned and being left alone throughout that we can see this all the time and Imam Musa Qadim alayhi salam, uh, no different than the other Imams, was Muslim. In fact, his Muslimiyah and him being subdued and suppressed is very much highlighted more than a lot of the Imams when we see how, what he had to go through and, and, and how bad was his situation as opposed to to the other Imams. So the question is, why are these Imams jailed and oppressed? Why are the Imams in jail? The reason is because the nation and the followers do not have marifat of the Imams. They are ready to leave the Imams. Uh, this happens when the Imams are left alone and when they're abandoned. That's why they're put in jail. That's why they're oppressed. That's why they are martyred. And hence, this is the legacy of the Imams as it comes along. It is something that we need to truly look at and see how this plays a huge role in our relationship to the Imams and the Imams' relationship to us and their expectation from us. When we look at the legacy of desertion and abandonment of the Imams, we can look through all of it. For example, Imam Hassan alayhi salam, here, one of his commanders, Ubaidullah ibn Abbas, who was the brother of Abdullah ibn Abbas, he uh, went to Syria where uh, Muawiyah met him and offered him uh, a deal made a deal for him to see, you know, if he wants to make a deal. 
He says that if you leave Hassan, uh, stop being his his commander, I will make a deal with you. And he offered him, you will be a commander in the Syrian army. So you will not lose your post. You will be a commander in the Syrian army. Uh, you will get uh, multi-million dinar signing bonus. So he got uh, a signing bonus and a good reward for joining us. And number three, that you will get the most beautiful woman in Syria. We will give that to you. And based on that, Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad left Imam Hassan, joined the ranks of Muawiyah. And that's how it turned out. He just left him. Imam was left alone. And that's why you see what had, uh, what was, what happened, happened because of this reason. People leave the Imam. They do not have the ma'rifat of the Imam. They have the knowledge. They have heard the hadith of the Prophet as to who the Imam is, but they do not have the ma'rifat. Their hearts are not with them. They do not have a place for the Imams in their hearts. We see the same situation with all the Imams. I'm just going to give you another example of our sixth Imam, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq alayhi salam. When we look at him, we will see that uh, his student, a student that he had uh, by the name of Sadir Sayrufi. Sadir Sayrufi, one of the students of the Imam who is a very revolutionary and very inspired student. So he used to talk to the Imam and pressure the Imam that you should rise up. This is the time for you to rise up. Because on one hand, the Umayyads are running away. On the other hand, no one else is in charge. The Abbasis are fighting them. This is the time for you to stand up and do something. He is telling the Imam this. Yes, uh, he's uh, advising the Imam as if the Imam doesn't know this as if he needs to be invited. See, this is a student of the Imam, and this is the marifat that he has of the Imam, that the Imam doesn't know this. Maybe if I tell him, maybe uh, some sense, uh, billah, is going to go into his mind. And this is a student. So the Imam, how can he reply to him? He, he took him out uh, for a ride, and he showed him a flock of sheep. And he told him that if I have an equal amount of Shias who have ma'rifat of imamat equal to this flock right here, then I will rise up and I will stand up for what is right. And he, student, counted the number of sheep. There are 17 sheep in that flock. So the Imam was saying, if I had 17 people who had the ma'rifat of imamat, I would rise up. And here his own student has, he doesn't have that. Imam had 4,000 students uh, and many more followers. And he's saying that he doesn't even have 17 people who have ma'rifat, who follow him with ma'rifat. So having the numbers is not the issue. It is how many of these people truly have the Imam in their heart. Truly that Imam and Imamat is a part of their life. La ilaha illallah. So how should a Shia be? Imams have explained that. And I'm not going to go into that about what a Shia should be, but some things that Imam, uh, we have hadith from Imam Qadim alayhi salam. One of the hadith that we have from him regarding Shia. Just let me say a few things from that hadith so that it can help us to understand what kind of personality and a person a Shia should be and what he should be doing. Uh, so the Imam has said that min uh, shiatina uh, man la 
yam tadna bina mu'linan wala yuwasil lana mubghidan wala yukhasim lana waliyan wala yujalis lana aiba fa kayfa asna'u bi hawla al mutashayya so he goes on so long hadith just a few things i will mention from this place he says that uh, a shia is someone whose uh, voice who doesn't talk in a way that uh, that others are going to uh, hear meaning that his talk is private he keeps to himself he doesn't go out openly in trying to uh, reveal what the imams are or, or where they are what they are you know or their relationship they are uh, ready to be with the imam their marifat is there but they do not want to sell the imams or to sell this relationship that they have to the imams they uh, talk less and they listen more this is one of the uh, things that he says and um, they don't give themselves into hearsay uh, what people say they don't lend their ears to that they don't give importance to what people say because to them the truth is clear from what Allah has said and what Ahlul Bayt have said there is nothing more to listen to what people say about things this is not important for them and hence they don't get involved in that just some characteristics of a Shia. Why are these things being mentioned? The main thing is that the Shias, their characteristics is that they uh, listen to Ahlul Bayt. They don't try to teach Ahlul Bayt. They know that their opinions do not count in front of the Imams. Imams know more than I do that's the marifat they have like a soldier in an army the soldier's job is to uh, bow down his head and wait for the command when the command comes he doesn't question the command or try to advise the imam or to try to tell him no well uh, i don't agree with this or i don't think this is the best thing to do whatever the leader says that's it your marifat is that he knows more than i do that he has Allah behind him. Allah has guaranteed and Allah has purified him and Allah has given him the knowledge. That's my marifat of him. And hence, whatever the Imam said, no matter what the case is, I go along with that. Sadire Sayrufi did not understand that. He is advising the Imam what to do. He's telling him, you should be doing this. You should be rising up. And Harun Makki, if you remember the incident of Harun Makki, that uh, Harun Makki, who was a companion of the Imam, when he walked in, Imam asked him uh, to walk into a fire, walk into the fire. And he just walked into the fire and sat in the fire. And when Imam had asked the same thing from Sadir Sayrufi, who is a revolutionary person, he started to explain Sharia to the Imam. You know, to put someone's life at risk is wrong. You cannot put someone's life at risk. He started saying that. He started teaching the Sharia to the Imam. And Harun Makhi, when he walked in, Imam asked him to go in the far. He went inside without question. He said, if the Imam said so, he is the Imam. And Imam said, this is called Marifat. And this is the type of Shias that uh, the truth needs and the Imam needs. And when they have those followers who have Marifat like that, then yes, then the Imam will uh, take the stand because there are people who have Marifat of that stand. This is one of the things when we look at it, we see that Imam Hussain 
had the same issue. He was in Hajj and, and he took off his ahram and he told the people, uh, it's time to go and leave here. And the people who came for Hajj were advising the Imam and they're trying to tell him, how can you ask us to take our ahram off? This is the day of Arafat. We wore our ahram. The only time ahram comes off is when we do our uh, Eid, when we do the Jamarat. And after we do the Jamarat, then the ahram will come off. You know, you know the Shariat also. We should know that. And after that, yes, after it's over, then we'll go. Imam is saying, no, we have to go right now. And they're saying, no, you can't. You know, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. You want us to lose all this ajr and, and, and our wajibat uh, for your politics? Yeah, this is your politics. You have a problem with Yazid, so you go and deal with him. We are not going to leave our wajibat for you. This is, see, when this is the marifat of a, a, a moment, then the Imam is like, what's he going to do? They don't realize that, listen, it is the, where did you get the Sharia from? You got the Sharia from the Masoom. They taught you the Sharia. In fact, their actions are the actual Sharia. Imams are the actual Sharia. When they say something, it is the Sharia of Allah. And this is the Marifat that is needed to be built in us. And when we have that marifa that yes, whatever the Imam says, we have to go along with it, no matter how much it is far from our understanding. We just have to do that. This, my friends, it denotes marifa. And when people, when followers don't have that, it leads to abandonment. It leads to desertion. It leads to the Imams being left alone. That is what happens. People thought that Hajj is deen and fighting a zalim is politics. They didn't know that what is more of deen. They didn't know what is the priority in deen. They just took something and that's it. This became their deen. They didn't realize that no, there is priorities and there's uh, when something that comes really hajj for those people who refuse to listen to Imam Hussain was a sin. And they earned their uh, Jahannam hellfire for not listening to the Imams and doing their hajj. So same thing that was wajib on them now became a means of hellfire for them. This is how marifat is learned. A person truly wants to be with the Imam and the Imams need this marifat. Allah wants this marifat to be in people. If we don't want a religion that takes us away from our Imam, we don't want that Hajj that takes us away from our Imam. We don't want that uh, prayer that takes us away from the Imam because that's not prayer. Imam Sajjad salam in the court of Yazid when he was speaking and the Mu'addin came to give the Azan to stop Imam Sajjad, Imam Sajjad says be quiet. This is not Azan. This is a game. You know, if Azan is there to oppose the Imam, that has no value. If prayer is there to oppose the Imam, that has no value. In fact, Allah is going to make that a means of hellfire. Because this is where Allah kept it. And if you do not have that marifat, Imams are left alone. And that is what happened with Imam Musa Qadim alayhi salam. He had no one who understood him. He is in jail. Why is he in jail? He's in jail because he has followers who do not have marifat that their imam is in jail and they are just living their lives without any problem.
without any issues, without any hang-ups. They just go about of their lives and things are happening in their life without any problem. They just go about doing things. This is not marifat. And that's when we don't have marifat, imams are left alone. Yes, the Shias at the time of Imam Qasim, they cried. They cried, they did mock them, but they did not do anything to free the imam. Yes, you know, they cried, but what's the use of their crying? The imam is in jail. Do something about it. Do something about it. You're going about your business and the imam is in jail and you sit like that. An incompetent and irresponsible nation would see its leader incarcerated and go on with their lives as if nothing is happening. This is a sign of incompetence and irresponsibility. This is something that we now need to come and truly see. Imam Musa Qadim he was in jail and the jailers got fond of him one after another. They just looked at him. They got fond of him he, because all they saw him do was pray. In fact, when he went to jail, Imam said that Allah I had asked you, I remember, I had asked you for free time so I can truly worship you. And you have accepted my duas. And I thank you for that, for giving me the time that I may truly just focus on you and your worship. This is how the Imam went to jail. 14 years he was in jail on and off from one jail to another. If he was taken off from one jail, he'll put in another jail. And the only reason he was taken off from there is because when Harun Rashid asked the jailer to kill him, the jailer would refuse and say, I can't kill him. I'm sorry. I don't see anything wrong with him. He is a person who just prays all the time. He just makes dua all the time. How can I do anything wrong to him? So because of that, he took from one jailer to another jail, to another jail, to another jail. And no one wanted to kill him until uh, he ended up at the jail of uh, Shahik is Sindhi. And this Mal'oon, when he was put in that jail, he put the Imam in a dark hole of a jail cell. A dark hole and Imam went there very in difficult circumstances, in strenuous circumstances, he went there. And Harun Rashid wanted to kill him. So he poisoned some dates, sent those dates with a slave. The slave came there to the Imam and uh, offered the dates and said, Harun Rashid wants you to eat this. And the Imam ate a few of those dates and he took the dates. Shai Kasindi saw that and said, no, take more. And the Imam said, uh, don't worry. What you have been told to do has been accomplished with this amount of dates that I ate. And after eating those poisoned dates, three days he suffered the effect of the poison taking over his body. Three days he went through that. The jailer brought in some witnesses to show them that he is dying a natural death, that he is sick and dying a natural death, and to give witness to the people outside. So the, those witnesses came in, just witnesses as they were told, religious people. They were brought in to become witnesses for the Imam. And the Imam told them, don't give witness. Do not give witness, for it is a lie. It is a lie. And when the Imam died, they put the Imam to show to the world that he died of natural causes. They put him on the bridge of Baghdad. His body lay there on the bridge of Baghdad and the people were told to come and see him, to come and view him as a spectacle, his body as a spectacle. 
you know, it was there that the Shias would, would, would come there to see the body. Is he really dead? Is he really dead? He was lying there without coffin, without a shroud, without any respect or honor. And the Shias would just watch him like a spectacle to see if he's dead. This is the extent of understanding they have of the Imams. And it was so, this is why the Imam has been left alone. And amongst them, there was one Shia who had Ma'rifat. One Shia who had Ma'rifat. He says, no. You know, what do you mean the Imam is dead of Nashla? The Imam doesn't die. Whether he's alive or he's dead, it's the same for the Imams. He came there and he said to the Imam, Yabna Rasulullah, tell us, did you die of natural causes or were you killed? He asked the Imam, while the Imam's body was lying there, he asked the Imam that, and the Imam's lips moved, and three times the Imam says, Qatlan, 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 they have killed me, they have killed me, they have killed me. This was a person who had marifat. And that's why when they saw that, they said, we need to move him out of here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq and the blessing to be on the right path, the wisdom to understand his guidance, hasten the reappearance of our Imam to make us his helper when he comes. May Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.